Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Noelle and today I come at you with another shoe review. We are taking a look at the Kalenji Kipron KD Lite. Now for those of you who were able to watch my previous review about a Kalenji shoe, that was the Kalenji Kipron Ultralight. So this is kind of a heavier cousin of that particular shoe. Now anybody who's got a Decathlon membership should know or should take advantage of the fact that you're able to take some of the items out of the store for a one week testing period. And so that's exactly what I did with the KD Lite because number one, it looked so cute on the rack. Like the colors were super attractive. And number two, I wanted to see if there was another shoe that Decathlon carried that could match my needs. If you saw the previous review, you would have seen that I took the ultralight back because it was just a little too lightweight for me, considering that I'm actually a, a heavier or a more heavy set person. And uh, I'm not an elite type runner with super efficient mechanics. So I took them back. But I, I did say that um, I wanted to try out the other shoes that the Kathleen had because I knew that there were some gems, real gems, hiding in those racks. Decathlon actually carries a lot of their in-house brands, so they don't carry a lot of the name brands that you most commonly associate with certain sports, but they do have their own in-house brands, and that is how they're able to keep all the prices so low. They don't really have to pay for endorsements or anything like that, so they can just plow all their money back into the R&D and the construction of these shoes and then they sell these products to the consumers at very little markup I mean compared to the other big name brands uh, and that's why I'm a huge advocate of Decathlon um, or checking out Decathlon if you're in search of something and you've never tried the sport yet because the barrier to entry is pretty low with these prices that being said let's move on to the shoe review. The shoes do not come in a box because they're basically you just grab them off the shelf and you try them on and if you like them you get them. You can get them on loan for that one week um, personal testing. It's free free product testing. All you have to do is um, go to the customer service counter present two forms of ID. The previous video only asked for one form of ID, but this time around they asked for two forms of ID. One government issued and one not necessarily government issued, but a valid ID. So I presented my driver's license and a shopper's ID, <laughs> membership shopping ID. So I've been running in these shoes for about five days already. The first few days were pretty much just light and walking around and the last few days that's when I really took them out for a spin. Now with the weather being the way it is this month, it, it hasn't really afforded me much time to take these shoes out because it's been raining and with a colorway like this, you do not want to get this wet or muddy, especially if you're kind of um, there's an eventuality that you might have to return the shoe. <laughs> just, I don't want to mess this up. So, a lot of this, a lot of my experience using these shoes was running in my parking garage and running on a treadmill. <laughs> Recently, Decathlon and in their Kalenji line of running shoes, they've really been gearing towards providing more lightweight shoes, and that's because their philosophy is that. A lighter product improves running performance thanks to lower energy consumption because you don't have to expend a lot of energy just trying to swing that shoe through your stride. So everything, all the energy you expend is really just to propel yourself forward. At least that's the thought behind making shoes more lightweight. The Kip Run KD Light is uh, 215 grams in size 5.5. Aside from making things lightweight, they also wanted to make the cushioning and the energy response better for runners. So this shoe has what is called the Callen Sole, which is pretty much EVA. A lot of the shoe brands out there use EVA anyway, but they do say that 
this has 34% improved cushioning and 25% improved energy response compared to conventional foam. Now, of course, I cannot quantify any of that for you, but I will tell you about my experience with this shoe in a little bit. Aside from the cushioning, they also wanted to make sure that these shoes gave runners a little bit of a propulsive feel. It's got the up bar. You will see that branding here on the side of the sole and on the underside of the shoe. So this up bar system and P backs under the sole, it pretty much gives you a lot of spring, but also stabilizes the way your foot goes through the stride. Now they've also tried to make these shoes really comfortable. So they, they created the entire upper out of, well, it's pretty seamless on the outside of the shoe, but come towards the inside of the shoe or towards the inner part of the shoe. There is just one seam here, but it's not in any place where the foot really moves, so you won't feel it. Now inside the shoe, this is pretty much it's just a kind of like two layers of mesh. There's a wider weave mesh up here on the outside of the shoe and on the inside is a little bit more of a tighter weave mesh so that makes the shoe very very airy it's very um, ventilated so you won't get hot feet wearing these shoes also if you're that kind of person who pours water over themselves a lot these mesh vents will let the water out now they also have a pre-shaped sole made out of polyurethane open cell foam. There's a collar here at the back of the shoe to help lock down your heel and um, keep it supported while still being really soft. And the forefoot area is supposed to be reworked so it's more comfortable. The other part of the shoe here we've already covered all around here and in here let's cover this sole. This is a supposed to be a new sole geometry for Kalenji and a new rubber component so it gives this shoe excellent grip even in the wet even when running at top speed i have experienced how grippy these shoes are thank god i didn't really get any mud on them but i did almost slip earlier and it was just this shoe that saved me from doing a split lastly the drop this shoe has an eight millimeter drop from heel to toe now with sizing, Decathlon's shoes are mostly delivered in whole sizes, not really half. Although I did see that the Decathlon in the UK did carry half sizes for some of the larger sizes. They had 39.5, 40.5, that sort of thing. But the Decathlon here in the Philippines only carries whole sizes. That being said, the shoes still feel pretty good when worn even if they're just a little bit larger than what you're really supposed to be wearing see i wear an eight and a half which is kind of like a 38 sometimes a 38.5 sometimes a 39 is kind of like an outlier size for me but i do wear and i am a true 39 in the kd light and that is because you're supposed to buy one shoe size above what you usually wear so if you usually wear an eight and a half then you should upsize to a nine and a half they don't have a half size so yeah the nine the 39 is perfect here's where it gets kind of like you have to refer to my previous video because i am going to be comparing the two pairs of shoes the kipran kd light and the Kipran Ultralight. If you need any help finding the video, I will link up to it up there or you can click on it in the description below. So this is the Kipran Ultralight. And just by holding these two together, you, well, I am feeling the weight difference already. According to my research, this is 170 grams in size 5.5. So this is a size nine so it should be a little bit heavier but not too much and this is supposed to be 215 grams in the 5.5 you do feel the difference in the head now there's another difference in these two shoes 
and it's found on the bottom of the shoes. You'll find that this one is pretty much just foam and rubber, while the KD Light has that up bar technology that's a stabilizing bar that runs down the midfoot of the shoe and it's supposed to help guide your foot through that motion keep it straight so i did find that when i was running in the ultralights my foot tended to fly sideways this way while in this shoe in the kb light it tended to be a little bit straighter or tended to come off the ground a little straighter now there their tongues appear to be very, very similar, like made of thin material, which I appreciate as a triathlete. I don't really need a lot of cushioning through the top of my foot. But while the Ultralight's tongue is a little bit narrower, the KD Light's tongue is wider. And what happened to me when I was running in these is that the tongue would kind of fold forward like this as I went through my stride and so at the end of the run I would have a tongue that was folded over the entire front of the shoe so the ultralight has a little bit of a kind of a heel cup here it's a shaped piece of cushioning that helps keep the heel locked in and the, the Achilles is cradled by this part the KD light is a little bit thinner in construction through that entire ankle collar but it does have that shaped cushioning pad around the heel or on top of the heel which theoretically should keep your foot locked in but it's kind of positioned in a weird place on my heel and what it did was if I kind of pulled on my socks too loosely I didn't pull them up all the way then this part of the heel would pull the socks down. I had to pull my socks up at least once during um, or before the run, but then they stayed in place afterwards. The The outsole does seem a little bit hardier on the KD Light, but I took this for a run on, on a treadmill yesterday and I don't know what happened, but after the run, this entire part of the heel was covered in a fine black dust which kind of, I think you can still see it here a little bit on the heel. So that part of the heel was covered in a fine black dust. And now you can focus on my face again. This was just disconcerting because I don't really scuff my heel on a treadmill, but for some of his outsole to come off in a fine black dust was pretty strange. But then it never happened again, so I am not quite sure what that was. Now while this forefoot should be kind of like should accommodate a lot of different shapes, the actual feel of it is that um, if you have a very wide or high volume foot then this would feel a little tight for you. But you can lace it loosely so that the, the entire upper can still expand and accommodate your, sh your foot. The best thing about having this kind of mesh upper is that it really will conform to the shape of your foot and won't strangle your feet. The last difference between the two is the drop. So the Ultra Light has a drop of 6 millimeters and the KB Light has a drop of 8 millimeters. Now that's a drop of 2 millimeters difference. I didn't really feel like there was a lot of drop in this. It's pretty flat. But this one, even though the drop is 8 millimeters, when I put these shoes on, it felt as if there was more material here under the forefoot and um, the rear of my foot wasn't really like contacting the ground too much when I was walking. So it kind of it encourages you to put more of your weight on the front of the shoe rather than on the back of the shoe. So it pretty much, it felt like kind of like wearing heels, but with the heels in the front of the foot. <laughs> Especially when I rocked back onto my heels, that's how it felt like. So overall, I really did like running in the Kiprun KD Light versus the Ultra Light. And that's because I, I like having a little bit more support, a little bit more shoe underfoot. I really felt like I could go for long in the KD Light. I mean, 
it is a shoe that I think I could run 10 kilometers in, but also do speed work in on the track, do fartleks in on the road. It, it's a shoe that can do a whole lot of different things. Now, if you're the kind of person who loves cushioning, this might not be the shoe for you because it isn't very plush. If you put the KD light on your feet, they're not going to wrap you up in a plush toy sensation. Nope. Yeah, you're going to have to wear thicker socks if you like that plush sensation, but do appreciate the kind of shoe that this is. And what this shoe does is that it eliminates a weight burden on your legs. It allows you to pick your feet up faster and it just gets out of the way and lets you do what you do. So if you've got very good mechanics, not really very good, but if you've got efficient mechanics already, you can hit speeds, uh, faster speeds, then this shoe is pretty much it's a dream to run in because it doesn't absorb the energy that you put into the ground. Instead, it just helps you lift off. But it doesn't feel super bouncy, if you know what I mean. It's just, it's just there. It's, it protects your foot. It gives you a little bit of guidance if you've got kind of floppy ankles like I do, so that your feet generally move in a correct direction. All right, guys, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let me know in the comments if you've actually tried running in these shoes. What's your experience been with them? Because I've only had them for a week. If you've had them for a little bit longer, I want to know. Are they great for longer distances? Are they great for long, steady runs? I don't know. Let me know. Write it down in the comments below. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you again next time. Bye!